uh, I'll introduce Sho Nakatani from uh, Toyota Motor Corporation. He's, he came all the way from Japan, thank you very much, uh, talking about uh, their experimental Rust SDK. Um, a lot of us are very curious about this. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Sho uh, from Toyota Motor Corporation in Japan, Tokyo. Today, I will talk about developing experimental Rust SDK and a Beam NG4 IoT devices. Uh, today's goal was as follows. First, about Beam Rust SDK, we would like to make it the fifth Beam SDK. So I would like to share the motivation behind its development and present the current status of the project and encourage collaboration and gather contributors. About Spring QL, it is a stream processor specially designed for IoT devices. I would like to provide a brief overview of it. Okay, let me introduce myself and relationship between um, Beam and Rust. I'm conducting research and development in stream processing area for cloud and IoT devices. I implement Spring QL in Rust and it is open sourced in GitHub. I recognize Beam as the standard stream processing model for the next 10 years. So I desire to support the Beam model for Spring QL. I actively um, involved in the development of Beam Rust SDK since the February 2023. Okay, this is today's agenda. Rust SDK development, I will introduce motivation and design, Rust specific challenges and history and future prospects of the development. And for Spring QL, I will introduce it and um, integration idea with Beam. Okay, for Rust SDK's motivation, for pipeline construction or just pipeline development for programmers, Rust, uh, we would like to leverage Rust statically type nature and generics. Uh, also, we would like to meet the demand from Rustations for dedicated Beam Rust SDK. And for worker or server side, Rust is known as very memory safe language and also it is very performant. Um, even comparing with Go language, uh, Rust is more lightweight. In, uh, Rust has more lightweight runtimes. For example, uh, Go has garbage collection in its runtime, but Rust does not. Um, of course, I know Go is a very fantastic language. There are many Googlers maybe here. Um, okay, this is a bit of my personal interest, but um, Rust SDK in Beam would realize high performance single node stream processing engine. Um, relevant field, uh, relevant research field, um, Scabber, Saber, and Streambox are known as single node stream processing engine. And uh, there are broad, some blog posts titled, Do We Need Distributed Stream Processing? It is a little bit challenging title, but I like the idea. So it's too complicated to talk about here. So if you have interest, please ask me later. Okay, for Rust SDK design. Um, first, where does Rust SDK work? Rust SDK, uh, before the Rust SDK, uh, in Beam we have client, runner, and worker. And the Rust SDK works in client and workers. In client, it constructs pipelines, and in worker side, it executes um, Rust specific functions. An application um, developed here, client, is built as a binary statically linked with the Rust SDK. And the binary, binaries are deployed to both client and workers. And different binaries are built from the same application sources. For example, uh, a pipeline developer develops his or her application code in client, and binaries are built yeah, for his or her MacBook and for his, their team's uh, server Linux. Okay, these four uh, design concepts, um, important design concepts. Note that the concepts may require further synchronization with other contributors, but I think the four are important. First, 
um, RASIS DK is mainly influenced from um, TypeScript SDK for its features and Go SDK for its compilation and development settings. And statically type pipeline construction will be important. And it is a bit complicated, but um, RASIS DK removes pipeline APIs as TypeScript SDK does. I will explain it later. And Rust SDK has asynchronous execution of workers. Today, I will talk about statically typed pipeline and the removal of pipeline APIs feature through the word count pipeline example. OK, um, this will be a sample code of the word count application written in Rust and used with Rust SDK. Um, the word count takes uh, English sentence like, and God said, blah, 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 here. Um, here is uh, create transform. And the, this line is p collection of string. And the word count function is called here. And this is word count um, function. It inputs lines as a p collection of string, and it outputs p collection of key value, the key will be a word, and the value will be the count of the word. And the line takes apply method, apply method, method chain. And the apply method takes uh, p transform, like party and group by key combined. OK, for statically typed feature, um, especially automatic type inference through Rust compiler, um, this function uh, explicitly has uh, type here and here. So Rust compiler can infer um, the intermediate uh, variables types like line, word, and the out result of the from map here. So for example, uh, this line will be inferred as string by last Rust compiler, and the result type of the this flat uh, sorry from map is um, kv of string and i32 it is an integer it is um, just automatically inferred from the uh, rust compiler and for statically type nature especially for generics um, rust sdk will hold such a from map function from flat map um, built-in functions and per key functions. Uh, the functions are defined like follows with um, type parameters f, in, not out. In and out are um, relatively simple. It ha its type is uh, element type. An element type is a type of a um, field. Field is a, a column of, the, of a record. So element type, uh, the concrete type of the element type can be integer, string, kv, and the user-defined schema type. Um, element type is uh, defined in Rust uh, trait. Uh, trait is very similar to the interface uh, in Java. And f is a, like a function type, and fn of input and output. OK, this fn is function or closure in Rust. So the f should be a function taking input in lm type and output in lm type. So OK, um, these built-in functions are defined using type parameters or generics. So users can freely use uh, their field types like here and here. OK, this will be more uh, a little bit complicated. But um, run, uh, run <laughs> instead of pipeline. Uh, I mean, uh, in Java SDK or Python SDK, you will firstly create a pipeline instance with pipeline create or something. But in uh, Rust SDK and the pipeline is TypeScript SDK, we will firstly create a runner here. Uh, we create an instance of direct runner here. And the runner, runner that run takes a closure. The closure's input is root. This is a root of a pipeline. So it is uh, like p collection, but we call here here. 
call it here p-value, um, it is very similar to p-collection. This design is uh, proposed by the design docs simplifying Apache Beam or pipeline considered harmful. Um, TypeScript SDK and Rust SDK uh, also um, use this um, design doc. Okay, here uh, Rust specific challenges. Okay, there are many, many <laughs> challenges in Rust SDK, but I think the most difficult one is uh, how to share functions between client and workers. So functions and Rust closures, it's like um, user-defined party, combine fun, code, etc. Um, both binaries in client and worker contain the same function or closures, but how does a worker determine which functions to execute right now? Okay, runner can um, specify which function to run for in the Rust SDK harness, but from fun API, function API um, defined in protocol buffer, a worker can receive this function spec message and it includes earn and payload. Okay, then how about deserializing function body from payload here? I mean, um, client serializes the user-defined function body in payload and the worker just uh, deserializes it and calls the function body. Um, unfortunately, we cannot do this virtually because Rust cannot serialize function, especially for generic function, it is virtually uh, impossible to serialize um, such generic functions. So then, um, how about um, putting function symbols in ARM here? Unfortunately, it is also impossible. Uh, Rust does not have reflection feature, uh, so Rust cannot call function from its symbol. Also, furthermore, closures in Rust uh, are unnamed. So what is the function symbol in closures in Rust? This is the most different part from, compared from uh, Go SDK. So um, it is a little bit complicated, but how about registering such map? The key would be earn and the value would be function pointer, user-defined functions pointer. Uh, note that the function pointer would, be, would differ in bi um, binary in client and binary in server because they might have different architecture. But um, like, for example, we have um, initialized function in Rust SDK and some trick, and this initialized function might register this kind of uh, map or dictionary. It requires macro and further implementation efforts, but it seems not a bad idea. But I, I don't think it's the best solution, so we are currently working on the development of uh, safe serialization for functions. Okay, for final, for Rust SDK, development history and future. So why do I want to talk about the history? While I currently serve as the repository owner of the experimental Rust SDK, I'm not the project's original contributor. So it is important for me to acknowledge and honor the contributors of the past and current individuals involved in the project. But I don't have enough time, so I will shortly introduce the history. The development of Rust SDK uh, seemingly started from Jira ticket. Uh, it is created um, in July 2021. And there was a recommendation um, in the Jira comments to learn from the TypeScript SDK and advise uh, these three uh, legendary people. <laughs> and an initial concept of the Rust pipeline construction was shared in a GIST by this contributor. And the issue was migrated to GitHub, and the GitHub is Rust SDK issue is still active to this day. And three experimental implementation repository are created from the issue. Ken's one, and it is merged into Nivaldo's one, and it is forked 
to my repository, Les Hakura's repository. Current uh, active repository is this one. And this movement was organized by him. Okay, I'll shortly discuss each repository. Um, the Ken's repository, um, it seems like uh, Ken is in the Google Cloud Dataflow team, so the contributors here are in the Google uh, Cloud Dataflow team, maybe. And Nivaldo's repository merged the uh, repository and it added some features, but unfortunately, the development of the Nivaldo's repository ceased since February, this February. Uh, these are uh, contributors in Nivaldo's repository. And now, Le Sakura, my uh, repository, it is forked from Nivaldo's one and added some other features and documents, but ongoing. Uh, these are contributors. Um, con Kevin is very <laughs> new contributors. And we have many, many future work. Um, First, technically challenging imp implementation like uh, serializing and deserializing functions and RAS closures. It is led by SJ Varosan Steve here. <laughs> and we need to align design consideration for non trivial features like uh, registration of user defined object, coders, and artifact staging service. And we should complete the programming guide for Rust and work, working example. So we have many, many things to do. Um, it is the most important point. Uh, we call for more contributions in experimental Rust SDK. We will create good first issues in the Le Sakura's repository after this event. OK, I have several times. So I will talk about Spring QL. Okay, Spring QL is a stream pr processing engine for IoT devices. Its target device is middle to high end IoT devices like uh, Raspberry Pi and connected vehicles computers. I have such diagram in uh, we have cloud, IoT edges, it is also called FOGs, and IoT devices. So Fling and Spark and other uh, distributed stream processing engine run in cloud. And in FOG or IoT edges, Streambox, Scabbard are uh, a little bit famous in research field. But um, I would like to develop a stream processing engine for IoT devices, and its name is SpringQL. SpringQL supports semi-real-time stream processing. Its input will be sensor data and user input, and the output will be uh, device actuation, aggre aggregated data. It is sent to um, edge or cloud and user output like display and sound. Okay, this is Spring QL's current status. It is imp implemented in Rust and open sourced. So because it is implemented in Rust, if I support uh, Beam model to the Spring QL, I need Beam Rust SDK first. The Spring QL is distributed as libraries in Rust, uh, Rust static libraries are live. And in C library, it is, uh, we have static library and dynamic library. And for user interface, we have two cli client bindings, Rust and C. And users can ri um, write pipeline construction in SQL-like language. Um, so we have here, uh, sorry, we have here some string, um, create pump, blah, blah, blah. It is uh, SQL-like language. And developers can write his or her operation or transform in streaming SQL. But here I have some problems. Um, I found it is very difficult to construct DAGs or pipeline graph using SQL-like language. And it is very limited to uh, write operations using streaming SQL. So I feel uh, being model would be far better compared to SQL only SQL-like support. So I desire to utilize Beam for user in interface. 
Okay. Finally, I would like to show you the initial idea of how to integrate Spring QL and Apache Beam. Okay, applications, Beam SDK, and Spring QL library are all within the same processes, uh, same process and binary. So client, runner, worker uh, run in the same node, same process. Spring QL library serves as client interface and dedicated runner. And Spring QA runner receives pipeline graphs via um, runner API in protocol buffer format. Spring QA runner calls SDK harness to execute user-defined functions. So I may use loopback SDK harness to uh, make the worker in process. I found the loopback configuration from the SDK harness configuration document. To summarize about um, Beam Rust SDK, I showed the motivation behind its development. The motivation included um, Rustation motivation and my personal motivation, but uh, I would like to work for the uh, Rustation and Beam community. And I showed current status of the project, and it is the best, most important point. I called for more contributors for Rust SDK. And about Spring QL, I showed its target systems and architecture. And I showed, I introduced some uh, integration idea with Beam. Okay, that's for all for my talk. Any questions?